Hey guys, uh, welcome back. Today's video is a little bit differently. I'm here with Steve, our CTO, and we're gonna talk about the app and some of the new exciting things that have come out. Now, if you're not interested in app features and details, uh, well, first of all, you should at least check it out. It's free, it's called Overland Bound One. Go and get it for iOS or Android. Now, if this ain't your jam, we got other videos for you. We got videos about this, about that, about this truck. If you're totally confused and you have no idea who I am, I'm Michael, I founded Overland Bound a few years ago because we fundamentally believe that adventure is absolutely necessary. All right, we've, done some, we've been working our ass off, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> What'd we do? You and I met seven years ago, Eight years ago. Oh yeah, it's eight years ago this year now. Yeah. Um, and we had a great time working in, in, soft, in yeah, <laughs> so, software development in the video game industry. Yeah. Um, touch on that, Steve. And yeah, I mean, I, you know, Michael and I have worked together for six out of the past eight years, I think. Yeah. And the last year, uh, Overland Bound. And, you know, we're both from video game background. Yep. Uh, and I've been driving four by four vehicles for 30 years. I didn't think those two things, the sort of software engineering and the 4x4 vehicles would ever combine into a job. Right. Right? Right. You know, and so going back 30 years, I've driven, I had a 1986 Land Rover County Station Wagon 110, <laughs> I had a Defender 90 in the UK with diesel, and yep. on and on, right? Right. And now it's sort of... Power Wagon now. <laughs> It's a Land Rover. Wait. <laughs> it roves they, over the land. They told me it was when I bought it. <laughs> and no, it's just fantastic that, um, and especially for the last, uh, and certainly within you and I, sort of our overlap in the software industry. Yeah. Building these systems that have thousands of people all interacting in real time. Right. That's what our app is. Right. That's right. what we're doing. Right. And that's what Steve's done, you know, highly scalable environments and highly scalable Massively platforms, multiplayer video games, games. Yeah. direct parallel yeah. to the stuff we're doing, performance on a mobile app, Yeah. same thing. And we, we actually have some, well, there's behind the scenes stories about how, how you know, stable our software is at scale. It, it, does very, it does very well. We have no concerns yeah. there. No. And it's been interesting too, because you know, overlanding is a passion. I also grew up outdoors. A lot of you guys know my story. Um, but there, there became the opportunity to solve problems for the community with software. And because of our background, you know, we were like, we can, we can like, do this. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> we didn't, we didn't come, we didn't come into this uh, blindly, even though we knew it was going to be a, a huge, a huge effort. Yeah. But no, yeah. So I, I'm just thrilled to be doing stuff that yeah. lines like lines up so well with my experience and my you know my intrinsic motivations we have a bunch of stuff uh, in the maps area of the maps in the mobile app uh-huh it's pretty exciting and and emva maps yeah so we have the uh, u.s forest service motor vehicle use maps now yep. mm -hmm. as a layer in yep. the app so you can turn that on anytime yep and um, what's pretty cool about that is it's not you know if you have uh, the printed maps which everybody has right they're printed once a year, I think. Right. But if you look at the data that the US Forest Service has, it changes every day. They change things like, is it open? Is this road closed now? Right. So we can and do pull down that data periodically mm -hmm. and update the app automatically. So you don't have to do anything. Right. And so you can always see the latest state. Right. Yeah. So super helpful. The other thing about um, the map layer is that it is, it's super touchy swipey. Uh, it's really easy to access. So you can scroll anywhere in the country, zoom in, you'll see these banners um, that you can just zoom into and get those forest service locations. So they're super easy to access. Yep. Yeah, and you see the road labels and all of yep. that. And what's coming on that soon actually is they're able to, uh, to zoom in on the details. Like, is this trail open? Right. Is it suitable for my vehicle? Right. The, you know, for high clearance vehicles. Yep. All of that kind of stuff. So we, we have all that working internally and we can't wait to get that out into the app as well. Yeah. No, that's, that's super cool. Um, some of the, uh, the things that, that we all take for granted is search. Um, yep. So search is actually really hard under the hood in the software, but we've made a lot of improvements. So all you need to do is if you're on the map, you search for something and whether you're looking for a trail, a campsite, any kind of a location, it'll uh, re return those results near you, whether it's US Forest Service yeah. or... Um, yeah, 
locations that members have, yeah, have added. And, and we've made a lot of improvements in this lately. Um, we've had search in the app for a little while, but you know, you, you would have to select a different tab. I'm looking for a map location or a, a map resource, and then search within that different context. So as you were sort of hinting out there, blending those things so we can pull from external data sources right. and from our curated data, we right. can blend all of that and then show you very clear, with, using clear icons, what type of location is that? Is it one of ours where we have a member who's uploaded that perhaps? Or is it you know, from one of the external data sources? Right. But it's just one search function now. Right. Yeah. You guys know one of, the, one of the hardest things to know is whether that trail is open right now. And so we have the ability, once a trail is added, people can add reviews. They can also report it or flag it yep. to update that information. Um, another thing that is in your app now is GPX support. So yep. uh, for, go, for any off-grid trail that is not a, a road, you can import uh, 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 review or share GPX tracks. That's right, yeah. So we've been sort of uh, rolling this out incrementally. Mm -hmm. So we sort of rolled out the ability to add a GPX trail. Now you can see that on the map in full screen and zoom around on it. And uh, as, you, as you said, um, you can share the location of those with other members. Right. Um, or with people that aren't a member yet. You can send, the, send them the coordinates of that location. And the other thing we just added recently is like a lot of people want to know how long is a trail? Right. Like, what's the elevation change? So now we've uh, pushed that to the top. So as you look at the location on the map and you click on the details, it'll, it'll tell you all of that information. So the height change, the average speed right. that people did that trail if, they rec if that information is present in the file. Right. Yeah, and all of that kind of stuff. Right, things that are useful to you. If you have elevation change or elevation loss yep. and you know the cumulative amount that'll tell you you know how up and down that trail is depending on the the distance so we have that information as as yep. well yeah uh let's see so um uh one of the things that makes the app one of the things we're very focused on is really making it an all-in-one solution for adventure travelers so we incorporate a lot of um we incorporate um uh, three core areas. One is community connection. So yep. it is a, a, a social network app that allows you to um, reach out to people individually. You can send private messages. You can communicate in different categories so that you can get information from members. If you're, if you're traveling, you can see other members on the map. And throughout the app, you can you can talk to overland bound members and get updated, updated information. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Community is core. Yep. And then, you know, the other two pillars really are map, which we talked a little bit about, and yep. then the event and trip planning stuff. Right. And community is sort of on the Venn diagram, overlaps all of those things in every place. Right. So you can review a location. Right. You can, you know, like a uh, location, you can rate it a location. Right. Um, and so you'll see, you'll see in the app, you'll see that everybody, uh, anywhere you see a member's icon, you can tap on that member and, um, and send them a message. Now, privacy is, the, of, is of the utmost importance to us. So each member has the ability to turn on various um, ways that they can be contacted. Um, so that is very important to us. But basically throughout the map, if you see a, a member icon, you can reach out to that member and get some more information. Um, speaking a little bit more about the trip planning, um, yep. the uh, rally point is a big pillar in the application. So you can plan your own get togethers and you will be able to invite overland bound members in your area automatically. And then you could say whether that's an online meetup to talk about, you know, worn winches or expedition equipment, or you can meet someplace and actually get together, kick the tires, or you can also add multiple waypoints and be, and be able to plan your trip if you want to go on a trip with multiple with multiple people. Yeah. And again, community is core in that and connected throughout the app. Yep, there's uh, discussion threads on each uh, rally point event so yep. that you can communicate with other people that are attending. Yep. Um, so yeah, the community overlaps everything really. Yeah, and we've been doing a lot of, uh, um, uh, again, there's small things that just make the, the, the app more useful to you. Um, for example, whether you're in rally point and looking at the uh, location of the rally point or 
you're on the resource tab of the map or the member tab on the map, any place um, you can tap and hold to get um, the location and then share that location out with anybody using your phone. And, and the reason that's useful is because you get a GPX coor a GPS coordinate that's um, accurate up to, what'd we say? Te is it 10 meters or three meters right now? It's three meters, I think, yeah. So three meters. So it's three meter accuracy. Tap, share your location or say, hey, meet me here. Tap, share your location. It's really, it's really easy to do. Yeah, another sort of thing about sharing, and it, it, seems, uh, it seems easy, but the one thing we've put a lot of effort into is making sure you can share to as many different destinations as possible. So, so between the web version of Mobile Unbound and the app, and then between other apps that might understand, uh, you know, uh, latitude, longitude coordinates. Mm -hmm. So working on making sure that if you, if you uh, create a location on the map, or if you set up a rally point event, you can share that with people easily. Right. And sort right. of layering that usability into the app. Right. Again, it goes back to community being core. So we, we really spend a lot of time with, with community. If you, if you look at other apps, um, uh, if you look at other apps, they focus on one area. We really try and encompass everything that you might need when you're adventure traveling, map, events, trip planning. And, and of course, the most important thing is, is your, your community. Um, okay. Now... Where are we going, Steve? We got some things coming up. Yes. Things that you, you, we've just started working on, which are pretty exciting. A couple of things that spring to mind that I'm excited about. Um, the first one is something that we're asked about all the time, <laughs> and it's kind of a no-brainer. Not, not necessarily easy to pull off from a technical point of view, but that is the ability to use the app when you're offline, mm -hmm. you're in the boonies, you don't have signal. Right. So uh, what can you do? Well, obviously the map is core, to, you know, that's like the primary function when you're offline. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna be communicating with people in the forums because you can't, you don't have a connection. Right. So being able to usefully use the maps offline has been sort of a, a big effort and it's an ongoing effort. And we're not quite there yet, mm -hmm. but we have uh, some working stuff internally that's pretty exciting and I think people are gonna like it. Yeah, so one of the things that, um, uh, we'll be doing is making that really easy for you to, to utilize once that functionality is in. So for example, if you say you're going to an event, if you say you're going to a location, uh, you'll be able to simply one tap download that map um, for offline use instead of having to go through a very complicated process. If you are going to a destination that has an off-road GPX track, there'll just be a button right there that says download the offline map. And so that's it. You don't have to draw boxes or go to 27 different tabs. tabs. You, just, you just click on that and it'll download. And then you can discard that, um, that offline map data or keep it for later. You'll be able to save that data, but it'll be um, yeah. uh, very, easy, very easy to use. Yeah, I think the trick is easy to use, but layer in the depth so you can go in and right. say, I don't care about that type of information, but I absolutely want to have that information. Right. So we'll make the best uh, choices for you in default. Yeah. So it will suit most cases. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you want to cache more data and like fill, fill up your phone with gigabytes of map data, you can do that. Right. You know? <laughs> right. And some people will want to do that. You know, yep. they want to have everything at their disposal. Yeah. yeah. Many of you guys know this, um, but I'll say it, you know, uh, uh, easy to use usually means hard to implement. But <laughs> yeah. what we've got running is 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 great. Yeah. yeah. I think people are going to like it. Yeah. Uh, it's probably one of the most requested features, I think, we've seen yeah. from the feedback. So, yeah. Yeah. So a little bit further uh, down the road, um, but this year is um, the ability to record your GPX tracks yep. and save uh, and save them as well. And you, we'll be recording that telemetry information. So, you know what your altitude change was, um, yep. your 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 average pace and, and your time. Um, yeah. So we'll be we'll be doing that a little bit later on this year. Excited yeah. about that. So so right now we have the import functionality, but you'll be able to do that native in the app without having to use a third party app. Yeah. And you will also be able to share those GPX tracks yeah. out from the app to other places too. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. What else am I forgetting? Uh, what else have we done? <laughs> a whole bunch of <laughs> Constantly grinding. <laughs> yeah. We really are. Yeah. And um, I mean, lots of stuff in the map. Yeah. Too many details to mention. Right. But just tons and tons of like optimizations. But from performance point of view, mm -hmm. I made a big one recently actually on that, that front. And usability, primarily. Right. 
right? A lot of usability improvements. Now, um, you guys, I'll, I'll have a, um, uh, if you guys do want to get into the nitty gritty details, I'll have uh, some release notes and you guys can browse those. If you guys do currently use the app, then I know there's a lot of, um, there's a lot, there's probably a long wish list. You can see if we've addressed some of those things in the release notes. Yeah. All right. Cool. We'll do this again. Yeah. Excited about what's coming up. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very right. excited. Thanks, Steve. Okay. Appreciate Thank it. You. See you guys.